Greetings. Hello, Captain.
Well, you're back. Oh, we'll get to what happened to Barrett. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Don't you lin me. I thought things had already gone sideways, but no, that was just the beginning. More pirates showed up when you were gone. We weren't as lucky this time. Calvert. Troy. Some of the new Dusties. They didn't make it. Well, how could you have? You weren't here. Anyway, I was pinned down behind some crates with Barrett. Bullets and laser fire everywhere. No smile on that damn carefree face of his. Like he knew this was it. I started stealing myself to go out fighting. Then that idiot puts his hand on my shoulder and says, Stay here, Lin. I got you. Next thing I know, two of the pirates are dead, and he's got the third one in a headlock. Drags him out into the open at gunpoint and demands to talk, or else I'm going to demonstrate Newton's third law on this guy's temporal lobe. And that's when they brought out Hella. I didn't overhear everything, but after the ten longest seconds of my life, Barrett put his hands up, and both of them ended up getting taken aboard the pirate ship. And that's the last I saw of either of them. They could have grab jumped anywhere. I tried pinging a transmission to the ship in the comms building before they left, but the pirates must have fried it. You want to try it? Go ahead. But the odds of them being alive, even if you could find them... <sighs> I've lost a lot of people on this run, Dusty. I just want to pack up.
if we got into this mess? Would you be quiet? Trying to make out the grab jump calculations before we're out of range. Out of range of what? Out of range of the sensor array on Vectera. Would you keep up? Once we're outside the star system, the bandwidth goes from instant speed to effectively never. What good is sending a transmission down there? You gonna tell Lynn how royally screwed we both are? She doesn't even have a ship. You underestimate how many of my admirers there are in the galaxy, Heller. One of them is bound to show up. Looking to reunite with this handsome face. We're doomed. Capital D, doomed. Got it, okay. Whoever finds this, I'm attaching the interstellar coordinates to the metadata on the transmission. Rescue us. Repeat. Rescue us. So, you actually get that computer working again? What? Let me see that. <laughs> Funny. Even knowing he's alive, I still never want to see him again. Hella, on the other hand... Okay. Let me send you the location data embedded in the transmission. Find them, okay? Well, don't start buying me stuffed animals for my birthday or anything. But yes, all right. I don't like seeing my people hurt. Even Barrett and Hella. Just get after them, okay? And hey, if you ever need a little extra help, I've been thinking about a career change lately. Maybe it's time to put Argos behind me. Seems like you've been keeping busy, Dusty. If, uh, you find yourself in need of a capable traveling companion, we should talk. My contract's up with Argos, and I could use a change of scenery. Works for me. I'm not fussy about assignments. I'll go where I need it. Right. I'll get to work. Let's catch up later. Finding Barrett. Keep an eye out for Hello while you're at it. I can't believe Barrett snuck a transmission to us. He always finds a way. Damn him. 
Make it quick. We have work to do. No, I don't. I only ask as many questions as I need to get my job done. I had no idea it was dangerous. I've seen skeletons the size of starships, buried in sheetrock, and crystals that release a toxic gas potent enough to kill you through your suit. Once I was part of a job that unearthed an entirely new species of cave-dwelling insects. You never know what you'll find when you break ground. Rocks are good at keeping secrets. No. Whatever that thing was, it's the only one I've ever seen. I'm glad it's not my problem anymore. Don't hold grudges, Dusty. I sent you to do the job I was paying you for. Running into strange things underground is an occupational hazard for miners. I never considered anything else. My parents were miners too. I've been learning the trade since I was old enough to dig. The longest I spent above ground was the year and a half I served in the UC military during the colony war. That was more than enough for me. I prefer to keep my boots full of dust and my pockets full of credits. Less trouble that way. What about it? I did. I know I don't seem like the military type. Like most people, I was less practical when I was young. Well, I lost someone dear to me in the war. I'm as strict as I need to be to make sure my workers' families don't have to go through that too. Mining can be as dangerous as combat, you know. There's a good reason why I've held on to old habits. It was my husband. The love of my life. He was killed just a month before the armistice. Thank you. It was never quite the same after he died. Sure. His name was Manuel. He was a miner, like me. We were stationed at the same outpost for a few years, and we had the same supervisor. He was a better man than most. Honest, kind-hearted, and even-tempered. I've never felt more at peace than I did when I was with him. Losing him was the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Damn colony war. Heartbreaking doesn't even begin to describe it. Manuel was absolutely everything to me. Losing him shook me to my core. I've never been the same. Manuel was my greatest joy. When he died, he took most of my happiness with him. I couldn't handle the heartbreak. So I threw myself into work. I barely looked up from a cut of a years after that. I figured if I kept my head down and my workers safe, that eventually I'd get over the loss. But it's like I said, time doesn't heal everything. I believe I was only ever meant to love one person. I still hate waking up without him. Maybe you're right, Dusty. That's what Manuel would want, too. It's easier said than done. But leaving Argos was a good first step. I don't have as much to worry about out here. Gives me more time to think. Certainly. Do you need anything else? 